to do two angles, but when when I'm asking you questions, you can look at me here. These okay. are just to get a couple angles of you. So, <clears throat> okay. Uh, and the cameras will generally. Okay, now you you got that deal off of the scope, off of that scope, so it'll take the picture and they're in? Yeah. You don't have the cover on it or nothing? Nope. Okay, gentlemen, this is Hollywood. But if you can start by saying your name. I'm uh, Joseph Carrillo Rodardi. So we all took, you know, when I was born, you know, the Hispanic family always takes uh, the middle name, you know, uh, the mom. So you have both, you know, uh, you have my dad's name, which was Rodarte, and uh, my mom's name, which uh, was uh, Carrillo. What year were you born? Were you I was born uh, November the 23rd, 1933, at Point Happy Date Garden, and my doctor was Dr. Smiley, who was out of Indio. And, you know, they came in and uh, I guess uh, a Model T or whatever they were driving, you know. Yeah, when, they, when she was ready. But I was born in Point Happy Dead Garden, on the corner now of Washington and 111. The ranch <clears throat> had two parts of the mountain there at Point Happy. Uh, the, the, the place where I was born was on the, the first side, you know, of the mountain on this side. And then the other side of the mountain, which is now... Indian Wells, it used to be Indian Wells Racquet Club. I don't know whether it's that or not, but that was the uh, other part of the ranch, too. Uh, workers that worked at Point Happy worked on the other side, uh, lived there on the other side of the mountain at the rack, you know, where the racquet club is now. There was a house there and everything, yeah. So did you guys live on Point Happy? And I lived there for quite a few years. And, and my father's brother, uh, Teofilo, uh, Rodarte, his older brother, lived there too. Also, my uh, my dad's other part of the family lived there, which was uh, Mary Rodarte. She married Marion uh, Hernandez, mm -hmm. Mariano Hernandez, yeah. And so the, it was all all family, you know, the whole family was almost all there, there, yeah. Oh, well, so tell me about your parents. Hey. Uh, you know, back then, you lived there at the house, everybody ate together, everybody, you know, there was no uh, jack-in-the-box or, or all these restaurants that we have now, you know. In the morning when we went to school, we, my mom packed the lunch, and uh, I went to school there, the Lincoln School, which was an uh, all-Hispanic uh, school back then, yeah, that was in Indio. We rode the bus, and then uh, after the Fourth grade, then we transferred to Roosevelt High School back in Indio, mm -hmm. and then, uh, which was all, everybody was mixed, you know. Yeah. But the Lincoln School was all Hispanic kids, you know. So did, was your first language Spanish? Uh, we spoke both. I mean, I, at the home, we spoke Spanish. But uh, any time that we were out or with the kids or with any, anybody from the ranch, we, we all spoke English, so. But at, at the house... It was all Spanish, so, yeah. Wow. Because I remember great-grandma speaking. Oh, my Spanish. mom was, yeah, super, super, yeah. yeah. And then my mom also, because she worked there at the ranch that was owned by the Clarks, when they would come from Los Angeles to visit there, because we had, a, there's an archery course up there on top of the mountain that a lot of people didn't know. Mm -hmm. Movie stars would come to, that, to the ranch there. Back then, there was a lot of archery, and there's an archery course up on top of that mountain, that they all played, you know. And then back then also, there was these horses, big ones, that uh, Mrs. Clark owned. Anyway, we had stables there and everything. I mean, we, everything. We had stables, we had pigs, we had chickens, we had uh, goats, uh, two swimming pools. One, for, one swimming pool was for the Clark's uh, family when they came, and then our pool was up by the mountain also. And we used, that's the one that we used. All the workers and everybody used that pool. And that also uh, pool was used for irrigation to the, because, you know, we had, she had dates. We grew tomatoes. We grew, you know, seasonal stuff. Corn, tomatoes, chilies, alfalfa for the horses. Uh, the horses were these big horses like that they use uh, in the parades, you know. 
I can't think of the name of the horses. What do you call that horse with the big hoofs and everything? Uh, the Clydesdales? Clydesdales. Yeah. Okay, we had Clydesdales there that she owned. Yeah, beautiful horses, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a trainer and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Mrs. Clark had uh, a chauffeur and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the big, uh, back then, the, the big cars, you know, the, the Duschenbergs, uh, the Rolls Royce. She had a couple of Rolls Royces there. All the garages were in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, when Mr. Odell, the sh one of the chauffeurs, needed to help or anything, the workers would come in there and, and, and help polish uh, the cars and everything, you know. Yeah, it was, uh, we had everything there. From the Point Happy Date Garden, then our, our, our closest uh, right next door neighbor, what I want to say is a grocery store, a small one. In fact, we didn't even have to go to town for stuff like sugar or stuff like that, you know, salt and that little store carried everything. And that was at Indian Wells. I'm going back, this is back in 1933. And then there was another store besides Indian Wells that was owned by uh, Mr. Lawrence. And there was a Lawrence store. There was tamarack trees where it's a river now or the canal now where people actually, we lived in, back then a lot of people lived in tents and tents were a main thing. When we went on vacation to, to Fireball, we used to go like during the summer when it was too hot, we used to go to Fireball and pick cotton up there. Uh, and we lived in a tent, we take a tent, my dad yeah. would take, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was seasonal. For maybe two or three months, we'd go down there and pick cotton. Whatever seat was the season, apricots or whatever was in season. We stayed there for two or three months, and then we'd come back to the ranch. Mm -hmm. And then, we, of course, you know, the, our main crop there back then was the dates. And then when, we, everybody, when the ranchers and everybody got together, they would kill a pig or something. And everybody was invited. I mean, everybody that worked, and there was ranches close by, you know. Like on Sunday after church, everybody would gather, and, and uh, it was a birthday they were celebrating or somebody getting married or something like that, and mm -hmm. it was always a big deal, and real nice, very nice. Now I'm going I'm to back up a little bit. Okay. Because Jared wanted to know about the story about great-grandpa carrying messages in his sandals. Oh, yeah. My dad that was a runner in Mexico, yeah, Zacatecas, Mexico, he... he he used to be a runner for, um, I, f I forget who was in charge, whether it was Villa or who it was that he worked for, but they weren't allowed to say who they were. And, they, and, and he had uh, huarachis. They used huarachis with a three-hole. And the, the three-hole huarachi had a split underneath where they would carry the mail in between the, the, the shoes. Yeah. And the, and, the, and, the, and the other part, yeah, uh -huh. nobody would know. And he'd go from Jerez, Zacatecas, to Zacatecas, which was, uh, free. I don't know how many miles it was, but it was, it was, it was over 20-some miles. And once they got started, hey, it was a little jog. My dad used to say hey, he didn't like to talk about it because uh, he didn't want nobody to know that he was, he was a mail carrier for for Zapata or whoever it was, all of them, even his brother. Teofilo did that. Yeah, my dad did that for quite a while, and then, you know, you grow older and you move and stuff. But my dad did that on account of, not of him, because he was just a young kid. His mother was the one that was one of the, the gals that was in that Revolutionary War and everything, yeah. Do you remember his mom's name? Mer Mer Mercedes. Mercedes was one of the... I don't know whether that was uh, my grandma. I think, oh no, that was on my mom's side of the family. That uh, Her mom came to live with us for a while, and then she passed away, actually, while we were there. I didn't, we didn't even know that she was sick or anything, you know. It just, I don't, I don't know whether mom knew or my dad knew, because my dad came, and once he, he left, he stayed there for a while, mm -hmm. and my dad uh, did his, his commitment to... Uh, being a soldier for the Mexican army. And once he acquired, I think it was, it was a month, mm -hmm. and, they, and he practiced uh, marching and everything, you know, every day for 30 days. And then once he, he uh, went ahead and, and fulfilled his commitment, then he went, he, he had to go back to the ranch there at the Clark Ranch to work. We stayed there, me and my mom and my brother Simon and Roy, we all stayed there. 
for the rest of the year. I didn't have to get married. I had, oh my gosh, I had a beautiful father-in-law and mother-in-law. Oh, I loved them to death. They were great. And of course, my wife was a sophomore in high school. I met her up at Night a while, Linda Allen. I met her at the, at the show. I went to a show and she was an usher there. And she ushered me to a seat. There was two seats left. And she says, uh, don't sit on the first aisle seat because that's the one I'm going to take because I got to take people back and forth. But you can have this seat if you want it. And I said, okay, because I went to the show by myself. And then she came afterwards, after she sat, everybody, she sat down. We started a conversation, and I was going to school at Riverside then. Mm -hmm. I had a football scholarship there. It was Riverside Junior College then, which is Riverside City College now. And we got to talking and everything, you know, one thing that or another. And, she, and I said, well, what time do you, he said, I'm getting off right now. When the show was over, she says, I'm, I'm all done here. I said, good. He said, I'll, I'll uh, drive you home. She says, no. He says, we... You can't drive me home. He says, I'll let you walk me home. He says, I live with the Magaz right now. I'm staying with the Magaz. And the Magaz owned the dairy farm, the dairy milk up there that they sold. I says, okay, I'll walk you. So I did. I walked her over there and one thing led to another. And I says, hey, I'd like to go ahead and see you. You know, we, you know, I've talked. And he says, oh, well, I live in Hammond. It's called Vista. You know, there was, it was out of it. Uh, out of the town where they where her dad and mom had a had a house and of course her dad was a butcher and he worked at the AMP in Colton just dynamite dynamite father-in-law and my mother-in-law super though too and once we got everything straightened out yeah now I um as everybody knows I got I got my wife pregnant and she was a sophomore at Hammond mm -hmm. and uh I got joy it was my first, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and that was a big, you know, back then, you know, you, you, you know, you, Joe is a special kid, because, um, <clears throat> you know, we're kids and everything, you know, and, uh, hey, I, I, I fell in love with her, and, and we both did, and I said, okay, I said, I'll come to see you, because I was, I was working at the ice plant, Coachella Valley ice plant there, uh, and I said, uh, when, when I get done, and then I, I start school back again, because this was during the summer when I met her. So then I went and over the mountain and everything, and sure, I, she was outside waiting for me when I drove by, and believe me, if she wouldn't have been outside, I probably would have missed her. And she was outside in the garden. You know, they had, uh, back then, you know, all the houses had gardens in the back or in the front. Well, her, their garden was in the front, right next to the highway. And so... When I went by, I saw her, and it really, I says, oh, my gosh. I says, great. I says, yeah, uh, you know, Bella uh, Vista, you know, this is uh, where she lives. I said, I would have missed her because I was going right into the town where she they lived outside of town. Yeah. Anyway, when Joy, when, when uh, I found out that she was pregnant and everything, I, you know, I went and I talked to both her mom and her dad. And, of course, her mom back then, you know, if you did something like that, what they did is just, you got rid of the kid, you know. And I said, no. I says, uh, I'm going to raise it. And, and my mother-in-law wanted to say, well, how are you going to raise it? You're going to school. You're not. I says, hey. I says, I got a scholarship from school, a football scholarship. I had a job with Kresmer Lumberyard at Riverside. And I says, hey, if worse comes to worse, my mom will take care. I'll have my mom take care of the kid. I want to marry your daughter. So I had to give her another week to think about what I had said and everything. I know I can do it. So that's my kid. I said, I don't want to get rid of it. You know, back then it was easy to get, easier to get rid of kids and stuff. And I, I didn't. And I told my mom and everything what happened. She says, no, my mom, my mom said, bring the kid. We'll, we'll, we'll raise the kid ourselves. Well, after a week, my father-in-law, he stepped in. He said, you know what? My father-in-law was, was right up front. He said, you know what? We'll, we'll do what you said, Joe. And he says, and don't worry about a thing. He says, we'll help. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Mm -hmm. And he was working for the AMP market there, just like I said, at Colton, you know. I said, okay. And, uh, and then from then on, even my mother-in-law, she just, once that kid was born, I'm telling you, in fact, his first name was named after a saint, St. Francis. That's who Joyce was named for. 
But they never called him uh, a Frankie or a Frankie Rodarty or nothing. They, we always, my mother-in-law always called it Joseph. Joey, 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 Joey. He called him after me. He said, he's going to be named after you. So when he got into, so when Joey got into his first grade kindergarten, everybody was calling him uh, Joey. I mean, we call him Frankie. The teacher says, hey, your, your name isn't Joey. Your name is Frankie. So he says, no, my name is Joe. So he was, he's not named after my dad, you know. And so I had to, I told Linda, I said, go down to the registrar's office, change his name. He said, because your mom started all this. Your mom wouldn't, your, uh, my mother wouldn't, my mother-in-law wouldn't call him a Frankie. He called him always Joey, 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 Joey. And that's, and that stuck. And that's how. He got his name Joey, yeah. And what was Joey like when he was little? Oh my gosh, man! He's just uh, on account of Linda, my 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 wife. She oh, he was just he was he was, just, he was a good kid. I mean, there were there were you know back then, and not only that. I mean, he was raised by he had like three or four mothers. I'd take him up to Hammond, you know, my mother-in-law, oh, she loved him to death. My father-in-law, oh, my father-in-law just really, really just, it was just like, it was just like one of their kids, you know, and it was one of their kids. Let's rewind then to your brothers. You have two. Oh, and my brothers, we had, yeah, I had uh, Simon and I had Roy, Rodardi, which Roy was the movie star of the family, you know, and he changed his name from Roy... Uh, Carrillo Rodardi, to he has his uh, uh, movie star name was Diego Carrillo Rodardi. That's what, that was his, uh, and he was of course he was a Spanish dancer. He danced with Greco for two years. He went to he went to Spain, and he danced with Greco. And then when he came back from there, then he went and he started dancing with Lola Montes, who he danced in that troupe for up until he passed away. And he was, uh, I mean, he went all over the world. I had articles. There was an article in the paper that said that the next Greco would be him while he was with the troop in Spain with Greco, yeah. And he was good. I mean, he put on shows. In fact, he put on a show there at the Coachella Valley High School. Really? Yeah, for everybody, yeah. And he with a guitar player and and Lola Montes and everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your parents must have been really proud. Oh man, I, I mean, I, I was, I, I was, I mean, and then up and, but I always was proud, uh, I was proud of him. The one person that I didn't get to know, that passed away when she was born, uh, was my uh, sister. I had a sister that was born. The fir our first kid, my mom and dad's first kid was a girl, and she passed away. You know. She, when she passed away? When she was born. Oh, she wow. she died when she was born, yeah. I don't think they named her or anything. I, maybe they did, I don't know. But I don't, I never yeah. heard a name or anything, no. You we didn't, well, we, we, they didn't talk about it. Yeah. My mom and dad never did talk. I didn't know that I had a sister up until I was growing up. And then my mom, oh, it came up in a conversation one time. And my mom said, yeah, he says, yeah. Wow. But, and my, but my dad always one time my dad was uh, feeling pretty good. He used to, you know, everybody hit the sauce back then. You know, and, <laughs> and he says, I think, he says, that was the best thing that actually happened. He says, because, I said, why? I said, because uh, we had three boys. And that would be, and she was, uh, yeah, but I said, hey, I would have had a sister. I said, yeah, I know, you know, but uh, back then, you know, yeah. no, everybody wanted boys. Everybody wanted yeah. boys, you know. And my, my dad's older brother, the Teofilo, had nothing but girls with, with one boy, yeah. Sam. Yeah, we had he, from his first wife. Yeah, really? with my uncle Sam. Yeah, he was, and he was uh, like a movie star also. I mean, he was, uh, but he lived in L.A. and he worked for all these people. Yeah. Now, with your siblings, are you the oldest or you? No, no. It was my uh, my sister, mm -hmm. and then it would be Simon, and then me. And then, uh, oh, then I had another brother that, that passed away right after Simon. The next, uh, and he was named Roy, uh -huh. and he passed away. Uh, but he passed away. He got bitten by some ants or something bit him, and he was like two or three years old when he died. Back then, there was 
you know, we lived five miles from Indio, so there was no cure, or they didn't know, or yeah. but that's what they think he died from. They don't, they're not sure. And then when Roy was born, they named him after my brother that passed away, yeah. And what was Simon like growing up? Oh, man, me and Simon, I mean, Simon to me was, Simon was my idol, you know, because he was older than I was. He, went, he was in the Navy. He was uh, in high school when, I, when he played football and everything. He showed me everything that he learned from Coach Alexander, who was his coach back then in uh, Coachella Valley High School. And I would tell him, I said, well, show me, show me. You know, when I was in eighth grade, you know, or sixth grade, you know, and he was going through his freshman, sophomore, and, and, and Simon was a good football player. Really? Yeah, he was, oh, Simon was great. Yeah, yeah, he was, he, in fact, he won that um, outstanding award for the year of, of his team, his senior year. You know, he was, yeah, yeah, he was, a, he was, a, and I learned I learned a lot from him, and any time that I wanted to know anything, that was my go-to guy. I'd go yeah. to, I'd say, hey, well, how about this and this? Well, you got to do this, you got to do that. Though, when you write to me, and when he was in the Navy, he told me, when you write to him, he says, uh, Mr. Simon Rodardi, he says, just Joe, he says, don't, he says, people are making fun of me. He says, when I get your letters, Mr., uh, you know, because in the Navy, it was, uh, you know, there were senior officers and stuff like that, and that's how you are you were supposed to address them, you know. And here, well, I didn't know, but once he told me, I just, I corrected everything, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I did it like what the Navy did, yeah. 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 Oh, but, him and, but him and, when he went into the Navy, mm -hmm. him and Tommy Hernandez, my cousin Tommy, they both went in the, the Navy together, and I'm the guy that took them. To the depot to, uh, to San Diego, where they were, where they were, yeah, that's where the first six they were in there for, I think, uh, six months. Oh. And I'd go once a month. I'd take uh, the families up there, and we'd yeah. we'd we'd have a uh, lunch or dinner together. And then I'd, I'd and I was a guy that would drove them up there. Yeah, oh. yeah, both families. Yeah, wow. so we, my mom, dad, go with us, you know, and. And we'd visit, yeah. and then when they got, when Tommy and, and, and Simon got separated up there, once they left, and then of course I would, I would take my mom and dad to see Simon wherever he was at, you know. Yeah. And then he, and then they got stationed in Mare Island, uh, that, and then from there I, then from there he went overseas, you know. Oh, he they did. went, and Tommy did too. Wow. And Stephen, his brother, Tommy's brother Stephen, he was in the Air Force. He didn't go in the Navy with them. He went into the Air Force uh, before them, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't want to get drafted and go into the, yeah. the Army back then. They wanted to choose their, yeah. that's what they chose. That's what they chose, yeah. How, how crazy. But Simon, my, my brother, is responsible for Tommy going into the Navy with him. Oh, he Cause, yeah, yeah, because Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because Tommy's older brother, Stephen, had already gone into the Air Force, mm -hmm. and they were going to go, so the... Once they got out of high school, boop, Simon took Tommy and said, let's go. He said, we're going to go, we're going to go join the, the Navy. And I'm the one that took them. Yeah, I took them to San Diego, to the depot there, and then they, they stayed there. And then after that, the following week, after uh, boot camp, when you could go and see them, then I took my dad and my mom and, and you know, Mary and Marion, and, you know, I took them all over there to see their kids and everything. And then once they saw them, then that was, you know, when you went overseas, was it kind of scary for you guys to... Well, you know, uh, w w back then, mm -hmm. when they were going overseas and everything, it was, it, was, it was quiet. Nobody knew where they were going or anything. They wouldn't say. I mean, they, wouldn't, they didn't want nobody to know where they were going or anything, you know. And that's, no. But once he was overseas and we knew, you know, uh, we didn't talk about it. You know, everybody kind of stayed quiet and everything back then in them days. You know, you just wouldn't talk because you didn't want whoever they were fighting to know where they were at or what they were doing or, you know, we just didn't talk about it, you know. Yeah. And then once it got out, then it was, that's when you learned everything of what went on and everything, you know. Of course, they put in their, uh, it was, back then it was three to four years or you could go ahead and re-up and Simon got out of the service and then that's when... Uh, uh, we went into the ice business, and then, of course, Tommy, his dad was a plumber. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, and that's what it was. And then me and Simon, of course, 
when I got out of San Diego State and Simon got out of the Navy, then that's when I said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I lacked, I think, like six or nine units from graduating from San Diego State, but I didn't, once my brother got out, he says, hey, come on, he says, we're going to, we're going to go, uh, I want you to help me out with the ice business, because we just got, he just got the railroad contract. And boy, that was a big, that was, it went from Indio, clear down to uh, Mexicali, to Calexico, you know, oh, wow. and that was just a railroad. Yeah. And then the, back then we used to have to put the ice in, the block ice, into these holes in the ground that were built with uh, the railroad ties, you know, yeah. to keep the ice, to keep the ice cold in the underground. And what we do, we come in there, we drop 10 blocks or 20 blocks in with two trucks, and that's how, and more or less the railroad is what made us, you know, back then. We got big, and then after that, we had routes, and, and nobody, you know, back then had, uh, there was no ice machines or nothing, so we delivered crushed ice and cube ice, and my dad was, uh, used to do our, um, used to do our crushing and stuff, you know, and so all we did was come into the plant, pick up where we were going, the plant took our, uh, we worked out of the Coachella Valley ice plant with Mr. Mason, let us, and we had, uh, and we stored our ice there and everything there. I mean, they, they, they also more or less made us. So when the fairs would come or any big event come, we had it, you know. And we worked out of Coachella Valley Ice Company, and they liked that because that way they were selling us all their ice, and they got every, every month, they got a check for it. And my dad was, and there was no better person than my dad to crush our ice or to do our block ice, and then back we made our cues with the machines and stuff, you know, so. And, uh, and the railroad, you know, once the ice machine started to come in and everything, of course the railroad bought them and everything, and then we lost the railroad account, but we still had any time that a train would get derailed or anything, hey, we were the guys that would go to, or if they had a bunker, uh, and then, and then what happened is when we had the railroad contract, we used to bunker the, 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 the produce trucks, like during the grape season and stuff, you know, to pre-cool the, the road. And we gave that big account to Coachella Valley Ice because we didn't have the money to go ahead and buy these uh, big augers and everything. We, we couldn't do it. Me and my brother, we, but the plant had the money, so they bought a big... Uh, one of the big crushers and stuff for to, to, to bunker, and uh, and we were all together. We were in it all together, so it worked out real good, you know. And then from then, from then we bought. Uh, uh, I used to have to go from Indio clear down to Pond Springs, to Pond Springs. Sometimes I even went and delivered ice into Pasadena, and and sometimes when. Uh, they would ask me for help. Riverside Ice Company would ask me for help because I worked for them though too at one time when I was at Riverside. And uh, we'd uh, interchange. We'd, we'd swap, uh, I'd take maybe 20, 42 blocks. I bought a, we had a truck that would carry up to, uh, up to 60 blocks. And of course we'd be overweight, but we also played with the scales. When we knew the scales were closed, we'd load up 60 blocks, take them to Riverside during their season. And then I'd come back, and I always, that, then I'd go to maybe San Bernardino and buy ice off of there because I went to school with uh, that kid also. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would back haul a load. I'd take a load to Riverside and back haul a load from San Bernardino back, at whatever they would give me. Yeah. So we wouldn't run out here in India either, you know. Oh, and, um, oh, yeah, that was, that was, and that's more or less, you know, hey, the ice business, yeah. yeah. And when I learned it was when I was there at Riverside. You know, I learned, I worked for a Riverside Ice Company. Mm -hmm. And I also, uh, Hugh Holmes, who owned uh, San Bernardino Ice, I got to know him because he was going to school too. Mm -hmm. And that's how, uh, and we controlled everything, believe it or not. We come, we could, San Bernardino, Riverside, and Indio controlled everything. No, nobody could come in or go out. I mean, and, and in L.A., everybody was fighting, you know, for, yeah. for you know. It was, you know, dog eat dog. Yeah, yeah. Small, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we controlled everything between us three, and we all got along real good. Tell me about yeah. your second born, Lisa. Oh, when Lisa, yeah, I uh, 
I was at San Diego State, going to school there, and then Lisa was born in San Diego at Mercy Hospital. And she was, yeah, she was delivered by, you know, uh, back then, you know, it was, and he was, uh, uh, that doctor, he was, just happened to be Catholic, so he would, she was delivered by a Catholic doctor at Mercy Hospital, because Mercy Hospital was more or less Catholic. And my mom came over and helped with her, you know, the first week or so, and, uh, and that's how we got. And then Joey and Lisa were just like two peas in a pot. I mean, they were, oh, Joey took, uh, Joey, when he was small, man, he was, hey, uh, he oh, he used to hold her hand and, you know, show her around and everything, you know. It was, it was, uh, and that's where she was born. Lisa was born in San Diego. Then when I came and joined, um, uh, joined my brother Simon, when we came back out, we all lived at, um, uh, in the house there with my dad and mom and everything, and I had both kids. I had Joey and Lisa, but then I asked, I asked Simon, he loaned me some money. I said, hey, you know, I'm going to, I want to buy a house now, you know, because we can't stay here the way that we are, you know, because it was too crowded in the house, even though mom didn't want us to move out. <laughs> we, I, I moved out within a month. Uh, Simon loaned me the money and I bought a house in North Indio, and, uh, and then from there, you know, we, and, and just like I said, we, I picked up the railroad account and we had, you know, we had, the, I had the money. He loaned me the thousand bucks. Yeah. And um, within a year, I paid him off on that. I had a house. And, and then that's where, from there on, we just kept on going. And then both of my kids, Raquel then was born at, at um, Casita Hospital. And she was delivered by one of the main doctors there. And then uh, Lance was born at Casita Hospital, and he was also delivered at the Casita Hospital. And then, and of course, you know, as the, as the kids grew up and everything, and I started, well, I started to, to move from uh, San Bernardino. Uh, uh, Hugh Holmes gave me some accounts up there. So I was going from Mendio, clear down to San Bernardino and back, so I just said, hey, and I told Simon, I said, I'm going to move out because now there was a couple of places, uh, Pasadena and stuff, that wanted me to deliver ice over there. And I figured, uh, I said, hey, I got to have our, my own, we got to have our own storage place and everything because Coachella Valley Ice Company was running out of ice all the time. And I said, what I can do, I can go to either San Bernardino, Riverside, pick up the ice, and then keep going to uh, Pasadena or keep going to L.A., you know, but, uh, so by me living in Rancho Mirage, everything was closer. Yeah. I had the ice because I put in some ice. Back then I had these cold draft. I had um, six of them. We bought, you know, I started out with three. And then, you know, I, I, I built a room for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a regular ice house there. And, uh, and it was just right because the following year they, you couldn't build. I, I went in there just before. Because uh, it wasn't it wasn't commercial, but that land I made it commercial when I went there. And then not only that, I was across the street from uh, uh, Eisenhower Hospital, and I delivered all the ice there too for a while because the machines weren't all that great. Yeah. And then during the year where they broke down and everything, hey, it was emergency ice or anything. Yeah. It was there, and their emergency most of the time was dry ice. Uh, all of our stuff that was big, like February, like the uh, the fair and everything, we had all of that. Mm -hmm. Or polo ground, yeah. El Dorado polo ground had a lot of polo players, and we I delivered the ice there. El Dorado Country Club during the Bob Hope Classic, I had all of that also. Wow, you had a lot going on. Yeah, we and you know you had to know how to run it, or else you know you just and the whole thing was uh, back then. Back then, I was I was dry, you know. I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't I didn't start doing my drinking up until uh, Simon told me. He says, "Hey," he says. Um, I said I told him I says, "Hey, when I move out, then I'm gonna you know I'm gonna have a beer now and then you know." Mm -hmm. And I did, you know. I, I and then you know of course, um, and then you know there were a lot of restaurants, the Iron Gate and. And uh, Sunshine Fish and Liquor, and then that was the time of the 
the, the dances and everything, you know, we had the balloons, the discos and stuff, you know, we're in, you know, and I delivered all the discos. Because all them discos, when they first came on, boy, I mean, that we, they used to get big crowds in there, and I, they would run out. Their machines couldn't keep up, so I was, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah all these disco places were, were good to me, you know, and I delivered to all of them, you know. Well, so, and I want to ask you, you had four kids. Mm -hmm. What was that like raising four kids? Was that all? Oh, the kids, the, oh, hey, everybody helped out. And every, every, hey, the girls bagged dice. I bagged ice here when I was in North India. I, I, I would bring ice in uh, these, um, back then they were made out of uh, uh, canvas. My bags and my ice bags, they were like 115 pound ice bags. Mm -hmm. And I'd bring them full, I'd bring like four or five every day. And the girls would, 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 bag, up, would bag up Rodarty ice, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was all clean and everything. I had an area there, I had an area built just for that. Yeah. And they would... They would bag up 10 pounds of uh, cube. Back then, there were 10 pounds of uh, ice that yeah. you'd bag 10. And they would, and you know, when I sold to, and everything was, uh, and, and, and they, were, they were thrown into the business, too. They helped out a lot, you know. And anytime we had a party or anything or during the fair or stuff like that, hey, they, they help, everybody helped. Everybody, you know, uh, they were, they were, they were, uh, Thrown into the ice yeah. business, you know, and it was all good because they had a good time though too, you know, because yeah. you know during the fair and everything they get to go to get in the fair free and everything and oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're delivering. See, all your delivery trucks had an entrance there, but everybody got in free though, you know. Oh, how cool. So they stay there, you know, and and then back then their their uh, their uncle Roy was uh, one of the guys that was. Uh, he played the fair, you know. He was in the oh, he was wow. in the fair deal. So, you know, it was uh, back then. Everybody in the in the valley helped everybody, you know. Yeah. But the kids were all the kids all helped out with the ice cream. So always, there was a party or something. The kids were in charge. They did, you know. Yeah. Especially, I'm glad I had two girls. Yeah. Because the girls were the one that did the food and all that stuff, you know. And yeah. they had, and they and they also had their friends that helped out with, you know, when we had the. Mm -hmm. Parties or a birthday or somebody or you or I was throwing uh, or somebody was getting married or something like that, you know, and uh, Yeah, the girls did all that stuff. Yeah. Now do you can you think of any stories? Are the kids pretty well behaved or did they ever get into any trouble? Growing uh, up, were they pretty good for the most part? No, the, 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 the kids uh, uh, For all four of them, I think the kids turned out uh, really really good. They're good workers um, no, I mean, uh, back then, you didn't have that much trouble, you know. Yeah. You, you didn't, uh, uh, first of all, there wasn't that many kids. And then another thing, uh, when you went to school or anything, the teachers there, I mean, they didn't let you get, get out of, uh, I mean, uh, like it is today, you know. You, yeah. you did your own thing and everything. Back then, you did what the teachers told you, or if you didn't do it, they would, they would go ahead and write a little note, pin it on you, and you better not take that note off your deal. And uh, when they get home, I'd look at it, and then, and then I would write a letter that I wrote it and everything. And I said, yeah. I said, but they were never reprimanded after the accident. You know, they, any time that any kid got out of control, it was... It was uh, Control right then, right then and there was fixed and everything. But they would write notes and say why they did it. The teacher would, and you know, and uh, it wasn't like they were getting uh, 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 whipping or something a day afterwards when the kid didn't know what the heck, what, why he was getting hit, because he forgot everything that he had done the day before. It was the teachers back then took care of the problem right then and there, and then they'd write a note, pin it on the kid. And then that note better be signed by you when, when he returned it the next day. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it was, yeah. What would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned in life? The biggest thing, I think, is uh, just be honest with yourself, you know. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. And then, you know, yeah, I mean, we're not all perfect, you know. We, we do, sometimes we say things 
and they're taken out of uh, contact, you know, that you mean something else, and sometimes you have to explain. Hey, but explain it, you know, the best that you can, you know, and be the best person that you can, you know. I mean, it's not going to hurt you, even if you're a bad person. It's not going to hurt you to tell the truth. And they know, people know then why you're, you're doing it also, or why you have done it. Or maybe there's, uh, you know, it's just like me. Uh, in my life, uh, Rodarty Brothers Ice Distributors, this, I mean, I have like a, a lot of, a, I don't want to say a number, I'd say over 200 people that, that helped us out while I was in the ice business, you know. And these are all customers of mine and everything, you know. And uh, I try to do the best service that I could for everyone. And, and you know, I mean, sometimes we make mistakes, you know, also, you know, and, uh, and just live up to it, you know. And then, because if you live up to something, then you don't have to remember it the next day or for the rest of your life. You, you say, yeah, I made that mistake and everything, and, this, and that's how it is, and pay for it, you know. Now just be honest with yourself. And if you're honest with yourself, then you, get, you don't have nothing to worry about. If you had a message that you want your family to know, your kids, your grandkids, what would you say? I'd just say, hey, you know, uh, I, I would like, uh, you know, we get older and stuff now, and things change, you know, uh, get accustomed to changes and uh, be the best person that you can. That's all. And, just, and not only that, just actually, just be honest with yourself, you know, how you would want to be treated, you know. And uh, there were the, what helped me, yeah, you know, and, and let me just tell you, what hurt me the most, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I learned this through my family, that the worst thing that you can learn uh, is when you lose somebody from the family, and that's and that uh, somebody that worked all his life. I'm talking about your your uh, your father, and uh, he really really didn't get to enjoy life like I wanted him to, and yeah, and he's in my prayers every night. Well, the whole family is, everybody is, and look and look at you guys, you know. Take a good look. Hey, you guys come from, from uh, and I'm talking about my, my brother Roy. Hey, look what you're doing. You use a lot, of, a lot of him I see in you, you know, what you're doing and everything, you know. And I, and Roy, uh, even though I'm the one that took care of him right at the last and everything, hey, I wouldn't, for everything that I experienced with my kids, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. I mean, it's... Uh, it's good. I did the best I could. Uh, 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 I was. Uh, uh, I did what I had to do back then. How we were raised and everything. Because now I think it's it's a lot different. Everybody, you know, and uh, everybody is more. Uh, what I want to say. Uh, uh, the kids nowadays are more more modern than they were back then. Back then, uh, you you took up for your dad, your mom left off, and everything. But now it's uh, wow. The kids are ten times smarter than what we were. You know, they are. I mean, uh, you know, just like me and my phone. You know, I like the way that my phone is set up and everything. But texting and everything, hey, don't bother me with that. I just want to answer the phone, and I want to talk to you personally, and that's it. I don't care about texting or anything like that. If you have something to tell me, tell me right then, and then it, it gets resolved. It doesn't have to be typed out where two or three days, if you didn't pick up the, the text, you forget about it, and you say, oh, my God, I got to answer, you know, talk to me, and that's how I am, now, even up to this day, yeah, you know. And I, and I just tell my kids, you know, hey, do the best you can. Have a good life right now. Right now, enjoy yourself. Because when you get old, there's a lot of things you can't do. That you, you know. Uh, I'm real happy with everything that I did. Who helped me? I'll tell you the people that helped me. My attorneys helped me. They all turned out good. My uh, accounting 
services, my bookkeepers and all that, they all turned out good up until this day. I've been with one company over 60 some years now. I started with Coachella Valley Tax and Accounting Service and they've been sold like three or four times, but I never changed, I kept with everybody and that's the best, one of the best things I ever did because if you want to know history about me, of my tax or anything, you can go back my whole life because I stayed with the same company. And I'm sure that, uh, and everybody, I mean, knock on wood, I, I got along with everybody. Am I a, a good person? Yeah, hey, I, I know in my lifetime I did some things that I wish that I never had done or anything. You know, it just happened that way, you know. But I, but I tried to be the best person that I could be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it hurts you most when my, my mom is the one I used to talk to all the time. She told me, because I had her, her last uh, 10 years or nine years that she stayed with me. She would say, wait until you get old. You, you won't be able to do this and that. And you're right. When we're young, we can think that your mom, who is, 50, who is 20, 30 years older than you are, can do it. They can't do it. I can't do it now, you know. I have trouble. I'm walking with a walker now, you know. I thought that would never happen, you know. I said, it'll never happen to me. When you're young, you think that way. Hey, but uh, you, you, get, uh, you get schooled. By, you're getting schooled by your parents, and you don't know it up until when you get that age. You say, oh, yeah, mom used to say, that, and boy, was she ever right, you know. And, that's, and listen to your parents, you know. They're not, believe me, your parents aren't going to guide you wrong. They're going to they're gonna tell it like it is, back in their time. And your time is, wow, man, you guys are going 100 miles an hour, and uh, I, hope, I hope you get there in uh, the, the way that you want to get there. That's the only thing that I can say. Of. Could I keep up with you? No, no way. No way. And I'm being honest with myself. Something that I thought I would never say. Because I always thought, hey, you do whatever you want. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be right there with you. I'm right behind you. I'm with you, you know. And the only thing I can say now to you young kids, when you say something to me, Grandpa, this and this, and I like it, my favorite word is right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I'd never leave home either. Just remember that. And that, those are my favorite words. If I had somebody like you, I'd never leave home. And, that, and, I, and I say that to your mother, Denise. I say that to Joey. I say that to his wife, which is, his wife is, man, she's a nurse. She's my doctor. She's everything right now. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about you guys. Did you turn out good? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But just like I say, the one guy that uh, really, really should have enjoyed life more is your dad. Up to this day, hey, and uh, wherever you're at, hey, I'm going to be there with you pretty soon. Oh, you know, you know that, uh, you know he's going to be waiting right there. With you. What was the song? How does it go? Dime cuando tu vendrás. Dime cuando, cuando, cuando. And then, you know, the rest, you know. I and just, what does it mean? It means when. When are you going to go ahead and pop the question? Or when are you <laughs> going to win? And, and, uh, and, uh, and tell me that, uh, that it's, it's we're, we're one uh, pee together or one piece yeah. of pie together or whatever, you know. Or our world together. You know? I love that. In English. Yeah. You know, and most of them don't know Spanish. So some yeah. of these mariachis. Yeah, they, they 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 sing their songs all in English, so that every, and that's and I understand. Yeah, because they're catering to the English crowd, but it's a mariachi singing it, so yeah. I love that. That was, yeah. Yeah. So I had I had for everybody. I had a song for them, you know, and that's why they that's why you they get to like you. The mariachi I said, hey, let's sing that for them, you know, so and so so. She's uh, okay, and then we surprise her. And the guy would say, uh, who told you to sing that song? He said, that's my song. I said, you got to be kidding me. He says, that's your song? Oh, that's, okay, you got to do it so good. And, <laughs> and she would tell me. I asked her, well, what's your boyfriend's favorite song? And then once I knew it, I said, okay, we're going to spring it on, but not 
just let us, you know, after about the third time, they say, hey, I got a song for you that you'll like. And I tell Olupe, okay, this is this, this is a guy that we were, they were, she was talking about. Mm -hmm. And man, we just lay it on him, and he's looking. God, he says, who told you? Who do? He says, my song. I said, I know, I, it is. He says, well, well, well wait just Oh my God, your family. Joe, your family, your family. <laughs> Uh, we that. remember, the, the girl <coughs> cousins remember going to Las Casuelas and you would have them come and sing a song for each of the granddaughters. I was the youngest <coughs> one, so I would usually, by the time they got to me, I would disappear. Yeah. But I remember you had them serenade Cammie, yeah. and then they serenaded Megan. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> we remember yeah, yeah. that. I mean, you know, that, that was... Uh... But you know, I can. I found out that I didn't have to go ahead and drink to do all that. Yeah. I can. I, I, and you, and you do it better when you're sober, you know. Mm -hmm. and, no. and, I, and when you <laughs> and when you're when you're playing with them, you don't have to buy no drinks. Everybody's buying yeah. you the drinks. Hey, we went, Joe. Who saw what song is this? What's the name of that song? So okay, next time that I come, I'm bringing so and so in. That's when I want you to play. Okay, you're yeah. on. You know, not and me. I'd write it down. I said, yeah. okay. What's your name? So I said, okay. I said, just, just, just no, remember, no. you know, because no, no. no. if you wrote it down when they came, then yeah. you'd spring it on them. Yeah. You know, when he wasn't, when he wasn't expecting that, and boy, they would just, he would say, you remember, you remember. Yeah. He said, oh man, you made my day. And then he says, hey, set them up for the mariachis and him and Joe. Joe. Yeah. I said, hey, I got another song for you. See if you like this. And yeah. I'd play her song too. See, <laughs> it would be, you know. And he'd say, where, where, where did you hear that song? I said, I just picked it up. That's her song. God damn. He said, your family, your family. <laughs> Everybody wanted to, he says, yeah, your family now, Joe. He said, you don't know, but your family. I said, okay, good. I'm family. I'm family. Keep on coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Grandpa, thank you so much.